Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to the Endless Runner game tutorial. So, in this one, we actually create a bridge that never ends. So we uh, dynamically increase, not increase, but we dynamically create some new bridges as our player moves forward. Just like this, if we take a look in the scene. So guys, that's what we're going to be doing today. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so what we're going to do this episode is we're actually going to create a new game object, a empty one. So that's Control shift n on the keyboard or create empty. Now we're going to change the name of that game object for tile manager. Make sure that we've put it in the center of the world, so 0, 0, 0. And I'm going to go ahead and just delete every single bridges I had before. Now this tile manager is going to take care of spawning those. So what we're going to do now is we are going to create a new script. Now you either add it by using the add component here or you can create a new script. So create C shop and call it tile manager. Make sure that this tile manager script is on your object. So drag and drop. And then we're going to, uh, we're going to open it up inside of model develop. And again, we've got a script for us to use. Okay, so the first thing that this tile manager needs to know is what exactly is he allowed to spawn. So in order to feed him that data, I am going to create a public, this time this is, this is a public field, public game object array like this, and I'm going to call this tile prefabs. Now if we take a look, if we just save this control S and we have a look at our tile manager now, there is now an array over here that is called tile prefab. And since we see it, let's go ahead and just set it real quick. So I'm not sure how many prefab you've created from last episode, but in my case, I have three and that's enough for me to test. So what I'll be saying is my tile prefab array size is going to be of three. Now this is going to create three elements down here and I can simply drag and drop um, every single bridges I've made. Now I've made sure that the first one is the normal bridge, so the one that has nothing on it, the clean one. And you'll understand why in a moment, but you don't, you don't really have to do it, but um, it's just going to be good practice for the future. So guys, this is now my tile prefab. And we haven't done anything yet in the script, but at least now he knows what he's allowed to spawn. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is actually have a reference to the player because the player is actually moving in the map and he is the one that triggers that okay we're going to create a new tile and let's delete the old one as well so based on the player position we're going to be able to tell is it the moment to create a new tile else we could be spawning the whole level in one go but that would be just um, you'd get a out of memory exception because it goes towards infinity so guys we're going to be spawning this at the runtime. In order to do that, we're going to keep track of the player. So what I'd like to do is up here, I'll declare a private transform. And this is going to be the player transform. Now the same exact way we did for the, um, the camera, we're going to say player transform is equal to game object dot find game object with tag. And we're looking at the player tag like this. And since we want the transform, we're going to say dot transform. Okay, but before we can actually use this, we're going to need some more information on where do we exactly want to spawn the object. So we'll need some more fields up here. Let's start with a private float that we'll call spawn z, which is going to stand for where in z exactly should we spawn this object because it's always on the same x, it's always on the same y where exactly in Z do we want to be putting this object? Okay, and then we'll also need to know what length is the object. So private float tile length and mine is 12. Yours is probably different, but um, my bridge length is 12. If you remember right here, we've did a little bit of calculations. So that's the first one. And if I want to put one after that, I gotta be putting it at 12, like so. 
And also one more information we'd like to save is how many tiles do we want to have on the screen? Now that's that could be depending on your machine, but since I want to push this on the phone and my bridge are um they're kind of they're not high polygon, but they're not low poly as well. I'm gonna make sure it is quite a small one, so maybe about seven tiles. So private int amount of tiles on screen is equal to 7. Now you don't have to put the dot zero f because this is a int value. We don't need any decimal number in that. Okay. Now with all of this information we are going to go ahead and create a new function. A function that whenever we call it it is simply going to spawn a tile. It's not going to ask any question just simply go ahead and spawn me a tile. Now um, we could be saying down here under the update void spawn tile. Now what I like to do when I declare function is say private void so you'd like to declare the type, in, not the type, but the uh, security level in front and I haven't done it because Unity by default gives us uh, the function already made like this but that's usually what I do, it's just something I like to do. So private void spawn tile and this is going to take in parameter a prefab index that I'll be putting on minus one by default and again you'll understand why in a moment. Now what I'd like to do is whenever I call this function say from the start maybe I want to be able to say okay so spawn me um, the prefab at the index zero like this. This would actually spawn the first prefab. I'm going to remove it for now but if I don't send any values, I just say spawn tile like this without sending it any values, any int in there, so no zero, this is actually going to do something else. Because by default, it's going to say, okay, so prefab index is equal to minus one, and then we can do a different logic based on that. But um, that logic is going to be done in a next episode, and this one, let's just go ahead and focus on creating some tiles when we walk, or I mean run. Okay, so back on creating that tile, the first thing we'll need is a game object of value. So game object I'll call geo right here. So now we've got our game object. We're gonna say geo is equal to instantiate tile prefab at the index zero for now because we don't really do the random just yet. So let's just find, let's just go ahead and spawn the first one right now, and we spawn it as a game object. Okay, so once our object is created, what I'd like to do is say go the transform dot set parent to my own transform. Now just imagine we create a new bridge like this. So just like in our hierarchy right now, we create a new bridge, it goes here, everything is well, but eventually our scene is going to look like that and that's not very appealing. What we'd like to do is whenever we create this object, we grab a reference to it, so that's the that's GO right here. And then we say your parent is now going to be tile manager parent. So every single bridge is going to be spawned under this object, under the tile manager. Now after that, we're going to go ahead and just move our bridge. So go dot transform the transform of the object we've just created dot position is equal to vector3 dot forward which is equivalent of writing new vector3 zero zero one times spawn z like this and then once we're done spawning that tile we can go ahead and say spawn z is now plus equal to tile length okay so what we're gonna do now just to test it out we're gonna put some spawn tile in the start. Let's just go ahead and just spam this maybe three times or four times. So right now our scene is empty but once we press play spawn tile should be called four times. If we press play as you can tell we've got one, two, three and four bridge but we're never gonna be coming back inside of this function so at one point we're gonna run out of tiles. Now what I'd like to say up here in the start is we are going to create a for loop. So for int i is equal to zero as long as i is 
oops, as long as i is smaller than the amount of tiles on the screen, i++. plus plus. So how many tiles right now are we spawning? I think it's seven, so seven. This for loop, this statement right here that we're going to write is going to be called seven times. So let's just put spawn tile in there. Okay, so that doesn't fix the problem, but now we know that um, there should be seven tiles on the screen, and here they are like this but eventually we're gonna run out and that's what we need to fix so inside of the update we're gonna go write some code we are going to say if player transform dot position dot Z so the current position of the player right now on the Z axis is bigger than spawn Z minus the amount of tiles on the screen times tile length if that's the case, we are going to go ahead and spawn a new tile, so spawn tile. Now this sounds really confusing like this, and I'll explain the code in a moment, but let's just make sure it works. So as you can tell, our player, every time he crosses a new bridge, he instantiates a new one. And then if we turn this off, we can still see it in the back, but eventually we're going to have some fog and uh, we won't be able to see everything. Now if you'd like this to be shorter, then you can go ahead and just crank down the amount of tiles on the screen, so maybe three, that's way too low, but we can work with that. As you can tell, we pretty much just spawn the thing as we proceed on the map. Of course, we're not deleting it, we are not uh, generating a random one, it's always the first one, the clean bridge, but we can fix that in the next episode. So guys, that pretty much concludes it for this episode. And um, if you enjoyed this or if you learned something, please leave me a like. Really appreciate that. If you have any question or comment, you can leave them in the comment section below and I'll try to answer them as soon as possible. Other than that, um, subscribe for more. There will be more coming soon. And guys, I will be seeing you in the next episode.